There is one simple practice that you can do each and every day and it will serve to strengthen your connection to the universe. If you want to feel more connected to the universal energy, if you want to feel more connected to your dreams, to your destiny, to where it is that you're going, to all the good in the world that awaits you, then use my tip and use this practice each and every day. It won't take long, but if you're intentional with this, you will see results instantly. This is how to strengthen, how to deepen your relationship with the universe so that you can move forward and actually get what it is that you want. And we're starting right now. So come on, let's kick on into it. Hi folks, welcome to Elevate. My name is Ben and it's such a privilege and a blessing to spend time with you every day. So I hope this encourages you. I hope it lifts you up and motivates you. And if you are new here, a great big warm welcome. Please consider subscribing, join the family. There's great energy here, folks. I'm here every single day. In fact, there's 900 or more videos on the channel right now. We talk about mindset mentoring. We talk about spirituality. We talk about the law of attraction, manifesting, living your best life. And today's no different. Today is all about deepening, nurturing, and strengthening your relationship with the universe. And your relationship with the universe is exactly that. It's a relationship. So often people talk with me and they say, Ben, I want to deepen my connection. I want to feel more connected to the universe. I want to ask the universe for something and see a sign. I want to make my requests known and feel an assurance in my heart, not just that it's coming, but see the evidence of that around about me and I'm getting nothing. And if you've ever been, ever been in a season of life where your heart is for something, you want to manifest something, there's a dream burning inside of you. It might be something material, it might be a new home, a new car, it might be something to do with the relationship. It might be something to do with your inner environment. It might be a healing or a restoration in a relationship. It might be love. Whatever it is, whatever matters to you, it matters to you because you have a vibrational, energetic alignment with that dream. So you are supposed to live in the fullness of that thing. But to get there, to get there requires you to be very intentional about deepening your relationship with the universe. And it is a relationship. And here's the thing. So often in life, when people start to try to become more intentional about this, it actually sends them off into more unconscious behavior, into more putting their fingers in their ears, getting more busy in life to distract them, and they don't realize that what they're doing is running from the still small voice of the spirit. They're running from their true self and they're running from the depth of relationship that is required of them to have to move forward. Let me explain to you what I mean. Have you ever known someone whereby the busyness of life keeps getting escalated in their world? They just get busier and busier and more and more consumed with people and things. I've met some incredible people who do some incredible things and they look like they are so giving and so loving and so open with their service, their acts of service, making things for people, getting alongside people, taking people out, baking meals for people, doing all sorts of things that look like an investment. But what they're actually doing is running from the still small voice and making themselves busy to drown out the inner noise. And people, when the volume gets turned up on the inside, they have this tendency to crank up the volume on the outside just a little bit louder, just enough to drown it out. And when the script, <coughs> pardon me, when the scripture refers to the voice of the spirit as the still small voice, it is not kidding. And there are so many things we do in life to drown that out because we're afraid to be alone with our thoughts. I'm going to tell you why, and this really matters, because here's the deal. When you develop a relationship with someone, you get to know them and it's exciting. 
When you first come into a new relationship with someone and you're building that relationship and you're dating some, someone maybe and you're going out and you're learning about them. And that's exciting to learn about somebody else. It's exciting to hear their stories and their tales and to share yours and to get to know one another and to go on that journey of growth, to go on that journey of being fully known and fully knowing another. It's exciting because the focus is on the other in the relationship. We're listening to them. We want to hear about their stories. Now, here's the rub, ladies and gentlemen. If you are to build a relationship with the universe, it means you've got to be intentional with your time, just like building a relationship with somebody else. You've got to set aside time. You've got to be delicate. You've got to be excited about it. You've got to invest. But the thing is, <coughs> pardon me, I've got a bit of a ticklish throat recently, so bear with me. The thing is, is that we have established that the universe lives inside of us. The law of divine oneness decrees that everything comes from within us. It's all inside of us pushed out. We project outwards and observe the universe into reality. In fact, the scripture says that your heart is the secret dwelling place of the Most High. It says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means the divine spark lives within you. So then, when you are developing and deepening your relationship with the universe, what you are really doing is deepening your relationship with yourself. Now hold with me, folks. This is really important, and I promise you it will hold water. The excitement in a new relationship with somebody else is that you're investing in them, they're investing in you, and you're getting to know somebody new. When you are in a deepening of your relationship with the universe, and the universe is the divine spark within us, what you are really doing is deepening your relationship with yourself. You're going on a journey to meet the deeper parts of yourself. And what happens is people don't like it because you come up against yourself. You start to challenge views on the inside of your mind that you know subconsciously are not healthy. But you just keep tucking them back on the back shelf of the mind and we don't pay awareness to them. But in deepening and strengthening your relationship with the universe, you will come up against yourself. And you will learn to have the hard conversations with yourself. You will learn to support yourself in love, to be kind to yourself, to walk softly and gently with yourself, to embrace yourself and be so kind and loving with yourself. In fact, you will learn to be more generous, more gentle, more graceful, and more empathetic with your own self than you are with anybody else. And as you deepen this relationship, this is how you begin to move forward. Because the spirit within will start shining a light on mindsets, on habits, on things that aren't healthy, ways that you speak perhaps that are not profitable, things that you do, ways that you think, things that have held you back. And the universe will begin to light a match in a dark place. And yes, initially it feels like you're coming up against yourself, but what you're really doing is coming up against the parts of yourself that can't go with you to your promised land. There are parts of you, there are parts of me that can't come with us to where it is we're going. We should be excited about leaving them behind because those things are the anchors that keep us anchored to where we are now and not allow us to move forward. So coming up against yourself is actually a good thing. For most people, it's so foreign that it feels different. And the minute it feels different, they say, oh, this is unfamiliar. I don't like this feeling. Let me run back to familiarity where all the dysfunction lives. Because somehow living amidst the dysfunction is manageable and feels safer than being in the unknown. But nothing new is created in the known. You can only create something new when you are deep in the unknown. That is where newness comes. So when you come up against yourself, don't be scared. This is why people go to bed each night with terrible sleep hygiene. And they're on their phone scrolling or listening to podcasts or they've got their TV on. They can't be alone with their thoughts. The reason people can't be alone with their thoughts is because they don't want to know what they're thinking. But until you come up against yourself and begin to think about what you are thinking about and process through that, you can't move forward. But the beauty is, 
the universe is right there with you. Remember, this is the one you are building the relationship with, and the universe is for expansion, not for contraction. So even though you don't know where it's going, even though you're deep in the unknown and it feels unusual and maybe a bit awkward and maybe a bit unfamiliar, that's okay, because that's where newness is created. And here's the thing to remember, folks. Your thoughts, your thoughts will come and go. It doesn't matter what thoughts you have, it matters what you do with them. Because when you can process the emotion from an experience, what's left is wisdom. When you process the emotion through an experience, what's left is wisdom. This is why being in relationship with your true self, coming up against yourself and deepening your relationship with the universe is of such great value. Because you don't create anything new when you live in repeating cycles. Back in the day, when they used to break in new horses, and get, maybe they'd even go and get a wild colt. What they would do is the trainer would come and mean no harm to the horse, but this wild horse had no idea what was about to happen. It was in the unknown. And they'd put the horse into a round working yard, a holding yard. And the trainer would have a hessian sack. And the trainer would call the horse over to it, maybe with some food, maybe with some oats or some sugar. And the horse would want to come over to have something to eat. And as it came, the trainer with its other hand would flick the hessian sack. And the hessian sack flicking would make the horse buck and rear up and run away. And it would go into fight or flight. And those hormones of stress would be released. And it would bolt from that situation. And then when those hormones had left, the refractory period was over. The horse would go back to grazing or doing what it was doing in the working yard. And the trainer would begin patiently, gently, calling the horse to itself again with the food. And the horse would begin to come over. And it would come a little bit closer this time. The trainer would then flick the hessian sack again. And the horse would rear up and buck and run and flick its tail and whinny. And they would go through this time after time after time. Until eventually, you could call that horse over don't even need the food in your hand, flick the hessian sack while rubbing the horse on its face and giving it affection. What that horse learns is that there was something calling it forward the whole time. The trainer was calling it forward even though it was flicking things up at it that the horse was frightened of. It was only frightened because it was a new experience it didn't know how to manage. And eventually the trainer proves to the horse that not just it can come to the trainer, but what was calling it forward the whole time was love. In the same way, your inner being, your subconscious mind, is constantly calling for your attention and flicking thoughts up at you. And it calls for our attention so we go over to it and we say, oh, what's going on over here? And it flicks a thought up and it says, you're less than enough. Or it flicks a thought up that says you're overweight, or you'll never be good enough. Or remember those words that were spoken over you as a child? Remember those things that were said over you in that divorce? Remember when you left this? Remember when that failed? Remember when this didn't work? And the inner voice will start flicking thoughts at you that will make you buck and rear up and run away because the hormones of stress are released into the body. And the thing is is that our analytical mind gets in the way because the refractory period for the hormones of stress is 90 seconds to two minutes, which means after two minutes, those hormones have organically left your body unless you are doing something to hold yourself there, like thinking on the emotion of that thought, like having an inner conversation about it. So our analytical mind causes us to have these inner conversations about thoughts we are unfamiliar with, because we are unfamiliar with them, it's unknown. And because it's unknown, it's uncomfortable. And because it's uncomfortable, we don't want to deal with it. So we go and we visit with a friend. Or we call somebody up. Or we browse our Facebook at 2 a.m. instead of dealing with a thought. Or we turn the TV up a bit louder. Or we have a conflict with someone. Or we move house. Or we find a new job. Or we break up with a partner. Or we buy a new car. Or something happens to drown out the voice on the inside. When you start deepening your relationship with the universe, you start coming up against yourself and these thoughts start getting flicked up at you. 
when you sit in the pocket of the unknown and when you know that you're safe and you don't have to run and it's okay to be there, what you begin to recognize as you process through these thoughts is you can process through the emotion of these thoughts that are being flicked up at you and when you process through the emotion and the emotional charge is pulled out from the thought or the experience, you're left with wisdom and it's wisdom that causes you to move forward. And so this whole time you begin to see that what was frightening you and the thoughts being flicked up at you was actually love calling you forward the whole time. It was the love of the trainer showing you and shining a spotlight, lighting a match in a dark place where those thoughts needed addressing and needed your attention, where the emotional charge had to be processed out of an experience you've had over something that's been said over you so you could gain the wisdom, the perspective and the introspection that you need from the experience so you can move through it and gain the wisdom. What was calling you forward the whole time was love. Don't be afraid to be alone with your thoughts. If you want to deepen and strengthen your relationship with the universe, get on a personal journey of growth and discovery and start with yourself. Go inside of yourself. Open yourself up. Talk to the universe and say, here I am and I'm ready for the next level. Would you shine a light and show me what it looks like? Would you give me the eyes to see? Would you give me the ears to hear the still, quiet, gentle, small promptings within? And would you give me a heart that obeys straight away so I don't have to go around the same mountain of dysfunction? And God will be with you. The universe and the angels will hold you tightly as you shift and move from glory to glory. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing will change until you start to move forward. Nothing will change until you go on a journey within yourself and start looking at your ways of thinking, start looking at the emotional charge within them and start processing through the emotion. So what's left is wisdom and it's the wisdom that causes you to move forward. Remember, when those thoughts get flicked up at you by the subconscious mind that say you're less than enough, that say you're unworthy, that say that dream's never going to happen, what it is that is calling you forward through those dreams is love. It's the love of the trainer. Those dreams are the blocks. The th dreams, those thoughts are the blocks. Those thoughts of it's never going to happen, they're the blockages to your dream. The thoughts that I am too fat, I am too skinny, I am too this, I am too that, I'm not enough of this, I'm not enough of something else. They are the thoughts that are blocking that very thing from entering your life. The reason your mind keeps flicking those thoughts up to you is because you've got to process the emotion out of them so you're left with the wisdom. The problem is the mind flicks the thoughts up at us in love. The trainer says you need to deal with this thought of abandonment or less than enough or needing to please people or this dream's never going to happen. You've got to deal with this. So it flicks it up in love so we can process through the emotion in love and gain the wisdom and perspective we need to move forward. The problem is, it's uncomfortable to feel that feeling. We think the thought and we let ourselves feel the feeling and buy into the emotional state without regulating it. When you learn to observe the thought and regulate your emotional state while you are processing, that's where your true power is. So the mind will flick a thought up and we immediately turn the volume up on the outside so it drowns out the noise on the inside. Because we don't want to feel the feelings of being alone, of being less than enough, of being not good enough, of having some internal conflict that needs resolution. But ladies and gentlemen, all you need to do is just to keep moving forward and being kind and gentle with yourself. Treat yourself the way you hope, dream and pray that, that just the most loving person in the world would treat you. Talk to yourself that way. Lift, <coughs> lift yourself up in love. Be kind to yourself, be generous and gentle with yourself. And as you do, you will end up with the wisdom that allows you to move to the next level. And at that next level, that will be where your dream comes to meet you. You've got to just move forward. You've got to strengthen your relationship with the universe, which means strengthening your relationship with yourself, which means coming up against yourself. But what you're actually coming up against is all the things that are holding you pinned to the version of yourself that has lived the life you have lived till now. There is a new version of you that is trying to be born. Choose to breathe life into that new version of you because where you're going 
Where you're going matters. That's where your dreams are. And I believe that it's right around the corner. Folks, I love you with all my heart. I hope this has encouraged you. I hope it's helped you to move forward, gain some perspective, and not be frightened about coming up against yourself. Do the inner work, folks. It's easier than you think. And when you get to the other side of it, it's majestic. Make sure you have a look at either of these videos. They're going to show you some more things you can do to move forward. Make sure you're subscribed and come and visit me again tomorrow. God bless you.